Yep. Yeah. So? Yep. Yeah. Okay. Then I start with your first no, no. comedy experiences. Go, Brad. He's still waiting for his. I see. Yes. Uh, okay. My first comedy experience was uh, when I was in like preschool and did the Your Good Man Charlie Brown, and I played Snoopy. Aww. And I got my first laugh, and I've been doing it ever since. Aww. But still going. Not really. Yeah. Not ever since. Okay. okay. Your turn, the... bitter. Yeah. Uh, mine was, uh, I was in uh, high school. I was a very shy kid, and a friend dared me to go out for a school play. Uh, and I did, and I got my first laugh. Then, uh, yeah, that's what I wanted to do. So how did you decide, okay, so the first laugh is clearly the important thing here. Um, how did you decide that it was always going to be the laugh that you wanted to be doing or getting? It, it came, uh, getting that first lap, it was, uh, I started getting some uh, wonder drug or something, it was, became really addictive and uh, from then I started doing, um, you know, announce, funny announcements over the uh, PA system for the students to announce things and um, just always, search, always wanting to get that lap, always. Yeah, there's something, uh, addictive is the best way to describe it. I think uh, once you become the kind of person that likes to make people laugh, you, you seek out the opportunities whenever you can, and then if you go into performing and doing comedy on a regular basis, uh, you can't help but really just uh, love that. And if you get good at it, it just even becomes more intense when you're performing for a thousand people or a couple thousand people and you're making a whole room of people laugh. So can I go back to the fact that you said you were shy? Yeah. How how did you get over that to get up in front of thousands of people? Um, I didn't. Uh, it took. It's it's. I know. I should be in, in therapy because. Um, and it wasn't really till Who's Line that I got actually better. Just because doing things like this, where I had to do interviews, I had to sort of work on. Uh, and even now, my palms are still sweaty. Like uh, talking. It's but on. The difference is, on stage, I'm usually with people I trust, or Brad, and um, mm. I mean, I know exactly what we're doing, I feel confident that it's going to work out, all the things that I don't have in real life. You know, if you don't, if you're not always sure in real life things are going to work out, you don't really trust people. Strangely but enough, he feels more in control when he's making, when he's it, up, making it up, as he doing goes comedy, than in his own life, yeah. where he has actual uh, free will. I know, yeah. Yeah, I need a lot of help. Yeah. Okay. So, how is it working together? You guys have been doing this now for seven years yeah. alone, yeah. on your own, without the other guys. Yeah, yeah. we we'll keep doing um, it until it works. Yeah, we're trying to get it right. It's uh, it's been really good. Uh, we, I mean, we've been touring for seven years. We've never had an argument, no, or even a crossword. It's been, no. uh, yeah. and it's just the show has just kept evolving and being more and more fun. And uh, we both. Uh, similar in the way that uh, we we try to make the show as challenging for us as possible because that's where the fun of it is. If we're always off balance, I think that's where a lot of the comedy comes from. Right. And we're sort of purists in that sense too. We want uh, to always challenge ourselves. We don't want to fall into a rut and say, oh that worked so let's keep doing that. We always want to push the envelope and get new suggestions or change up the games and, uh, and the list of things that we play so that it doesn't get stale for us. So, uh, why why did you choose to start touring with each other as opposed to any of your other Who's Line colleagues? Um, well, I asked every other member of the Who's Line cast, including Drew and uh, a guy that just worked at the studio, and they all said no. And so I found his phone number in the back of my phone book, called him, Asked if I could speak to his wife, and she wasn't home, so I asked him. Yeah, that's that's what happened. Uh, I know it just worked out. Uh, you know, Ryan doesn't fly, so oh. that makes touring difficult for him. Uh, Greg has a very successful stand-up uh, career, so he always had things going on. And, and Wayne Brady won't return our calls. Yeah, he'll, yeah. he just won't talk yeah. to us. Maybe you should leave him a singing. Oh, maybe. No, he has a restraining order against Colin. Yeah. Uh, it's a yeah. little misunderstanding, but it'll be clear. And he's just jealous of me because I'm better looking. So, yeah. It's and we've known each other for uh, 20 years, so... Yeah. Uh, we met when I was 7. And Colin, you were what, 46? Yeah. yeah. Yes. He's like a mentor. Or grandfather. <laughs> <laughs>